Welcome to Medical Myths, Legends, and Fairy Tales. I'm your host, Dr. Alan Christensen. Look, you know that between the latest online fads and the crazy media headlines, it's easier than ever to get confused about your health. And you and I just want to feel better and live longer. We want to know what works. And we can't wait for further studies. We need to make decisions today based on the best evidence we've got. Well, that's exactly what this show is here for. So let's get to it. Hey, Dr. Alan Christensen here with you. Welcome to another episode of Medical Myths, Legends, and Fairy Tales. So this is going to be a lot of fun. This is an interview with my dear friend, Dr. Isabella Wentz. And she has a new book out, The Adrenal Transformation Protocol. Highly recommended, a great book, very helpful. And the protocol is documented and evidence-based. She did a trial on this. We've seen survey outcomes and benefits to people in lots of ways. She and I had a great talk about all things adrenal. If you're not familiar with her, she's the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, The Hashimoto's Protocol, 90-Day Plan for Reversing Thyroid Symptoms and Getting Your Life Back. But someone I've respected for quite some time, good source of information, and we had a great talk. So enjoy this episode. Hi there. How are you? Hey, great. How are you doing? Doing great. I love your snow. You have so much <laughs> <laughs> I just sent you the link. You must have been coming on at the exact same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, it's like, okay, okay. And it's like the host is in, they will let you in. And I'm like, okay. And it's like, you know, you'll get on at the same time, but then the zoom behind the scenes connection. Right. Um, so, so how are things going with full script? Are you, are things moving in the right direction? They are. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're in discussions, so we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah, they went through a lot of change and they took on Emerson, and they've got like hundreds of people in the pipeline that is everything's been paused. So I may be may be able to skip the line, maybe doing kind of a different thing with them now. But thanks to the connection, so that's we'll see. <laughs> That'd be a cool win. Uh, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, I just sometimes find like when companies get too big, and even like with us, sometimes it's like things go through their like processes and sometimes you get stuck somewhere or you get whatever, like we've had, I don't know, I think, um, yeah, just, just kind of situations like that when that happens. And sometimes it just helps to go directly to the source, right? <laughs> Another direction can make a big difference. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Are you keeping yourself caught up and healthy through the whole process? I'm sure you're doing a bunch of interviews and stuff right now. And yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, I like mom boss or girl boss too hard because it's like, you know, kind of like my life is very calm and stable and I have like so much, so much time just to reflect and relax. And now it's like, wait a minute, we've got you, to, we want you to do this and we want you to do that. So just a lot of, um, I'm sure like you go through with um, whenever you work with a publisher as well, right? Cause you've got like your daily routine, but then they're like, but we want you to do 25 other things. So how, how do you, know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This one's different being that it's a cookbook. I'm not doing it as crazy. And I don't know if I would do it as crazy again as, as I have in the past. And I don't think I would. It's like the, um, the cookbook was a little bit easier. I mean, I was like postpartum and just not sleeping. So I was like, I'm not, not doing anything. I'm like, you guys want me to do that? No, not going to happen. <laughs> but, um, no, not that bad, but I just wasn't as, um, I don't, I don't think they asked for as many things. And I also wasn't like, you know, as out there too. So, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, but also then like, I have to like find the time to do everything else. And so right now I'm just okay with like, um, this part of my office being clean. And then my closet is like, <laughs> squished. That's and, funny. You know, <laughs> front stage and backstage, right? <laughs> exactly. And just kind of being okay with the chaos and and stuff like that. So I'm guessing from the wood that that's you're in Austin now, or mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, last time we were chatting, I was in um my white background. So that was the the LA scene. And so you guys <laughs> just came back from Arizona, right? Yeah, we were just down there for about a week and yeah, this is this is a so I think the first I think spring officially starts at five thirty tonight. Like like that's the whole um, what okay. the vernal equinox, and so 
yeah, this is spring. It was five degrees this morning. The lake is still frozen solid. We got snow coming tomorrow. And <laughs> I mean, it sounds like the spring I grew up with in the Midwest too. So it, that's <laughs> Chicago for you. It was like, you know, could be anything. <laughs> it, is what it is right. Um, <laughs> We actually have uncharacteristically cold weather in Texas. So I'm actually wearing a long sleeved shirt today. Usually it's like, it's so hot. And I'm like, I don't have, um, I don't have any, like, like, I don't have enough clothes. Like I don't have enough shorts. And now I'm like, wait a minute, I need sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, so, and then how was well- Q? Is she loving? Like, I want. I want to know. Is she okay? Like with the, with you all know, that snow. That's yeah. that's one of the coolest things about it. Because I honestly, I'm so happy to be back. But it would have it would have been like the biggest conflict to have her not happy with it. It would have been the hardest thing for me. I would have just okay. obviously honored what her needs were, but it would have just broken my heart to not be here, not be by my folks and stuff. But no, she's she's loving it. She's saying that she thinks she's she belongs here all along, and the the people and everything. And well, and the funny thing, so our garage is. We've got a heater in the garage, like a proper one. So it actually heats it. But she was out there working out and she came back in and she's got no shoes on. She goes, well, my feet were sweaty. So I just walked in with my socks. I said, honey, there's deep snow outside. I said, you're, you're, to- you're totally gone native. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, she's, she's all in. She's doing really well with it. <laughs> I bet um, one of the fun things about me coming to Texas is like just feeling like I'm getting to know my husband better from like another perspective. Cause they, they, um, I'm from a big city. So I'm very direct. I'll be like, if I go to a store, somebody will be in my way. I'll say, excuse me, I need to get that item behind you. So can you pardon my reach? And in Texas, people will just stand next to you and look at you and say, you're fine. And I'm like, are you saying, I don't understand. Okay. I'm fine. I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> it means like get out of my way. That's funny. <laughs> I need to say- and sometimes Michael will just, I'll ask him a question. He'll be saying, no, no, it's fine. But I'm like, uh-uh, it's not fine. Is it Texas fine or is it like real <laughs> fun? So it's been fun to like just pick up on some of the just cultural like, differences between, I mean, United States is so huge, right? And like you have, you think everything's the same. Every Like coming from Poland, I was like, oh, all Americans are the same, but it's just no, every Every pocket has, um, every state has their own, and maybe even every city has their own. That's interesting because Austin's a big city, but you're saying culturally it's still quite different though. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. And everybody, everybody's so friendly, which I love, which is like the Midwest. Um, uh, and the funny thing is like all of our neighbors, we just love them all. And we have this HOA and they're all like, have this like very individualistic, like attitude where they're like, oh, I'm just going to put a back, I'm just going to put a playscape in my backyard. I'm not going to ask the HOA. <laughs> like, they're like, got this, you know, like a little bit of a rebel mentality or whatever you want to sure. call it. Because we would be like, okay, we need to follow the rules. We need to do this, this and that. Um, so it's, it's just fun. And, and it's like, you know, they, they plant extra trees in their backyard or they like make a garden bed or something, but they're like, they're so rugged about it. It's like, well, it's my property and the playscape isn't bothering anybody. Right. <laughs> they ask all the neighbors around them if they're okay with it. And then, but they okay. don't. Have it away. So, so yeah, there's just like little subtle things that are just, it's just super fun for me to, to kind of get to know that. And then I'm, I'm enjoying, um, Tex-Mex food too. So you guys have good food there. We have a couple of Mexican restaurants here and <laughs> we had good stuff. Oh, in no, Arizona, of course, but you don't go <laughs> like yeah. we did that once. and That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Michael took me to like a Mexican place in Chicago and, I, and he was just like, yeah, this, this is not quite like back home. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's cool. So yeah, this would be a fun thing. Fun to talk through and talk about the the book and talk about your trial and the, 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 the survey, the study that you did. And yeah. Let's see. Good topic for the audience. And... Yeah. Let me see if I can pull up. I'm like, you know, I have the stats, but then I always forget them when I'm like on camera. Oh, you, <laughs> so don't need, you don't need exacting background. stats. I wasn't planning on asking like numbers or anything. Okay, and, cool. I'm like, if, if you want, it's fine, but don't stress about that. And, Okay, cool. Because I'm like, was it 92%? Was it 93%? Right? <laughs> I, guess, like, I think the top one was 92. I remember seeing that the bottom was like 70 something, but <laughs> really, right? 
Yeah. I get, I get like in my little mind, I'm like, I want to get the details just right. And then I'm like, but, and, and then my mind like plays tricks on me when I'm, if nobody was, if we weren't recording, I could just ramble it off. But because we're recording, it's like, oh. <laughs> I will, I will stop this and even like, you know, 20, 30 minutes be, be great. And we'll just talk and it'll be easy. So I'll stop this so the team is in editing place and boom, there she is. Dr. Isabella Wentz. How the heck are you doing? My friend? I'm doing so great. Dr. Christensen. It's so amazing to see you. You know, we've been friends for so long and now we live in different parts of the world than we did when we first became friends. And, um, and yet we're still passionate about thyroid health, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. And I'm super excited to, to share your new book with, with my audience. They're going to be so happy about this and great to, great to have covered this topic. So um, most of them know about you. I'll do a really good intro as well. They'll hear that, but where in your journey. So you, you've become this great expert. You've helped so many people and, like many, you got into this because of your own struggles. You've been very transparent about that. And you've just transformed a lot of how thyroid care is done, you know, from what you've learned, what you pulled together, what's worked for you, what's what you surveyed from your audiences. And now we're talking about the adrenal side of it. So where where in the journey did that come up for you? Where did it become a real relevant factor for for your thoughts? So just in my own healing journey, I first was trying to figure out what I could do about all of my symptoms in addition to taking thyroid meds, right? So meds helped somewhat, but then I still struggled with, with digestive issues and brain fog and fatigue and anxiety, irritability, like unrefreshing sleep, hypersomnia, and felt like I kept peeling back the layers of all of the different sources of inflammation in my body, right? I learned that I had a lot of food sensitivities and cutting out like two of the most common reactive foods for myself, which were gluten and dairy. And they also happen to be in my experience with, with my clients and then all of my readers that I've surveyed, the two top offending foods, I was able to get rid of my acid reflux within a three days, um, three, three day time period after having it for almost three years and the carpal tunnel went away and my IBS went away. I felt like, okay, this is working. And you know, my bloating went away and I like had abs for the first time in many years. <laughs> Um, but then I still kind of struggled with the energy level. So I still had that morning fatigue where I had a hard time waking up. I kind of had anxiety throughout the day and I kept feeling like hangry and, um, I would kind of go to bed late. I just felt like my, like, I wasn't like tuned into the daily rhythms. I was a bit of a night owl. And then whenever, like I would, I would sleep, everybody's like, get more sleep, get more sleep. And I would sleep and I would exercise, do all the right things but yet I'd like wake up tired. Right. Um, and so somebody told me about adrenal fatigue and me being a skeptical pharmacist, I look it up and I'm like adrenal fatigue. Oh, okay. <laughs> somebody said that this is like a, you know, what do they call it? Like a quack diagnosis. It's not a real diagnosis. It's fake. So I'm like, okay, just, you know, close that browser onto the next thing. Um, and this was of course on my own healing journey before, you know, I had a before I was like the official Hashimoto's guinea pig slash expert, right? Many <laughs> years ago. And then finally, I think it's like the 15th person that mentioned adrenal fatigue to me, where I gave it a, a deeper, deeper thought. And I looked at all the symptoms. And sure enough, I had most of them, right? So like the, the morning fatigue, I was sensitive to bright lights, I was craving salt, I had some sugar cravings. I was dependent on caffeine and so on and so forth. Like this was me. I was like, okay, so maybe it's not a diagnosis and, um, but maybe, maybe there's something there to it. Right. And so I did some of the recommended things for adrenal fatigue and I felt better. I had more morning energy. I had less anxiety. My sleep became more refreshed. I felt better overall. Right. And I had like, I was like, okay, so this is a thing I have to get the word out about it. And then I ended up writing about it in my book, the root cause. And, um, I know shortly thereafter you and I met and you came out with a fabulous book about adrenal fatigue as well. And I've always been a proponent of, if you have a thyroid issue, you're likely going to have some degree of adrenal dysfunction. In fact, like 
looking at the labs I've done for my clients, more than 90% of the time, they would have some degree of adrenal dysfunction whenever we did um, cortisol saliva test with them, or even like a Dutch urine test. So I've always been a proponent of it. I um, have kind of, you know, changed my mind on some of it since, since, you know, 10 years ago, I've evolved as a practitioner, I've, as a woman, as a healer, um, as a human being. And I've realized that um, some of the solutions that I thought maybe were the right solutions for adrenal support maybe weren't just realistic for, for some people. Right. So we tell them to sleep 12 hours a night. And I was like, I love that. But then I became a mom and I'm like, well, I can't really sleep 12 hours a night. I have like (laughs) a tiny, tiny human that I need to care for. And like, that depends on me for, for nourishment. And they like, they need to eat at night. Right. Some of them just have tiny stomachs or they have, um, you know, blood sugar issues when they're not, their digestive system isn't fully developed. And just kind of, kind of figured out like a new path to healing. And that worked really well for me as a new mom. And then I piloted it with some of my clients with Hashimoto's and it worked really well for them. So this is, this is why I'm talking about, I'm the thyroid pharmacist talking about adrenals now, right? (laughs) Well, it makes perfect sense. I want to go back a tiny bit more about the fatigue to dysfunction, because I really love the way that you've talked about the term dysfunction, adrenal stress, you've used both of those I've seen. And yeah, the fatigue model, I just want to briefly talk that through because I don't know, it, it often seems like there's a conflict between evidence and experience, something like seems like it's not real, but then actually works. But I think there's always more of a story behind it. And I think that the evidence, when you think things thoroughly enough, it, it does fit in some way. So yeah, the fatigue model, tell me kind of how you moved away from that term or that concept or um, and so, yeah, it's like, you know, doctors will say that, that leaky gut doesn't exist, but then you look up intestinal permeability <laughs> and it, it's like so much research on PubMed about that. And same with like adrenal fatigue, right. That you'll hear like, oh, it doesn't exist. And you'll hear that from an endocrinologist. They'll say you can have Addison's disease, but that's not what we're talking about. And then even some of our friends in integrative medicine and like some of our wellness enthusiast friends will say like, it does not exist. Adrenal fatigue doesn't exist. But, um, but I think there, there's, there's like a bit of, um, dispowerment when we say that it doesn't exist because maybe the, the mechanism of quote unquote, adrenal fatigue, isn't a hundred percent accurate, but the symptoms are real. They're so real. And the, the official, I guess, I guess we should back up of how, how that came to be. So there was a brilliant doctor that coined the term adrenal fatigue, and he, he had a theory on how it, how it happened. Right. So his theory was, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he believed that the adrenals actually were not able to produce, um, stress hormones. Right. Yeah. He wrote a book about it. The term was a little before him, but he said it was a mild form of Addison's that they were just too weak to work. They they couldn't make enough. And And, and that's, that was my understanding of how he described that process as well. But what we've learned since that point, it's like the adrenals in this adrenal dysfunction, um, the accurate term being HPA axis dysfunction, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal (laughs) axis dysfunction, say that seven times that, right? (laughs) Um, H-pad, what do you call it? (laughs) Right, right. I'm just like, I'll stick with like adrenal dysfunction. I think it's a great descriptive term, but what's, what's happening in the body and what causes these symptoms, these, like, I call them stress symptoms or adrenal dysfunction symptoms is that the body compensates for being exposed to stress for a prolonged time period. And the adrenals, the adrenal glands may be capable of producing stress hormones at the right times and the right doses but they're not doing so for whatever reason. And usually there's a communication breakdown between like the brain and the actual adrenal glands and something, something happens where, you know, they're capable, but they're just not doing it. And usually it is because of a adaptation that our body makes when it's under too much stress for, for too long time period, the body gets overwhelmed. And then, um, you know, there is a lot of research on this on PubMed and it, and I just want to let everybody know, like, if you're listening to this and, you're kind of confused. Like, does adrenal fatigue exist? Does it not fatigue? I think, (laughs) um, does it not exist? It's like the symptoms are very real. Um, some of the mechanism of action is like what the healthcare professionals kind of argue about. Right. And some of the nomenclature 
is what right. the healthcare professionals argue about, but definitely the symptoms are very real. Um, and the solutions are very real too, which is, which is the good part of this. Yeah. And that, that's awesome. And in the protocol, you talked about solutions and also things more practical, like you mentioned the sleep for one, and there's a lot of things that are talked about that could help, but can be extreme or can not really fit for anyone. But you talked about like a safety theory. And can you expand upon that and explain that to us? And Sure. So my theory is, is essentially anything that sends danger signals to the body, right? So if you are sleep deprived, if you are not eating enough calories, if you are um, perhaps just stressing yourself out too much, this is going to send a signal to your body. And perhaps your body will pick that signal up and say, okay, we are need to shift into survival mode, right? So I must be, you know, this person is not sleeping well enough and they're sleep deprived because there's a bear waiting outside of their cave and it wants to attack them. So I'm going to help them out and shift them into survival mode, right? Or they're not eating enough because there's a famine going on, or maybe they're over exercising and spending too much on a treadmill or stressing their body out in other ways because there's a war and they're trying to run away from things. And so what happens when we get all these, quote, I call them danger signals from our environment and sometimes from our body internally, then we shift into like the survival mode, right? And my theory is if you can send your body enough safety signals to kind of, you know, counter the danger signals, you can, you can shift the scale to where your body goes back into the mode of thriving. Right. And so the body, you put your body at ease and your body starts to relax more and your body gets more into that healing and resting and digesting state rather than that. Like I'm stuck in fight or flight or freeze. And, you know, I, I'm, moving into that survival mode. So this is, this is what I did with myself as a new mom. And then this is what I've helped, um, over 3,500 people that have gone through my adrenal transmission program. I've taught them how to send their body, these targeted safety signals to get themselves back into thriving mode. It's like, you can, you can just turn this dial a little bit this way. And all of a sudden your body shifts, right? <laughs> That's great. And yeah, there's so many obtuse words that you, you left out very, very skillfully. <laughs> you can do that really well. <laughs> I try, I try. I'm like, if I can't explain it in very simple terms myself, that means that I probably don't understand it well enough myself. And I'll, I'll sit and like, try to translate the terms. I'm like, okay, let's, let's figure out how, how to like explain it to, um, you know, somebody that maybe isn't like in the books all day long. Right. Well, and you know, to your point, I think even those who are in the books, the more simply you can say things, the clearer it is across the board for everyone. So that's that's great. It's a very it's a very high level of knowledge to be able to convey things well like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you know, something something you said that jumped out at me, I thought it was kind of fun, was about about caffeine. How you you were, your first thought was to to give it up, like no, that's just not going to happen. And, <laughs> and I think you actually did, but you did talk through and how for many people that may not be possible. Can you just mention a bit more about that and kind of how you address that in the protocol or? Oh my gosh. Yes. So when, um, when I had been working with people, I had utilized things like uh, pregnenolone and DHEA and various kinds of hormones worked well for some people didn't work well for others. Some people were concerned with using them. Not something you want to do without, um, practitioner supervision. And then I was like, okay, well, how do I empower the masses? Right. Cause we, I didn't want to tell people like take these hormones unless they were like one-on-one -on -one clients. So I shifted into like really heavy duty lifestyle changes. So it was like sleep 12 hours, like over the stress out of your life and, um, quit caffeine. Right. So sleep deprivation and stress, like these are like really powerful, quick ways to like shift yourself into survival mode. Like I believe sleep deprivation is probably the fastest way to do so. And, um, that's worked well for a lot of people. And of course it didn't work well for everybody. And I was, you know, you, you kind of have children and they teach you things. And <laughs> I was kind of like, well, I don't know, like they just, people need to do these things and they need to find a way to do them. Like they need to find a way to get more rest. And then I found myself with an eight month old baby where I was like, I am so tired all the time because I'm taking care of a baby and he's waking up every two to three hours. Um, 
And I had just started drinking coffee, like for the first time in my life on a regular basis. And it was like the only thing I had to like, to give me a little bit of energy and and, like help me get through like the early 5am wake ups when my, my beautiful baby was like bright eyed and bushy tailed. Right. (laughs) Um, you know, old Isabella would have said, we'll get a babysitter. And I'm like, well, you can get a babysitter, but you still have to be like a parent, right? Like you still have to spend time with your children and you want to, like you want to be there and you want to show up for them. Um, and so I know that's been a lot of my clients too, where I was like, initially I started working with them and they would say, oh my gosh, I can't sleep at night and I have no energy and I have headaches and so on and so forth. And I was like, let me do, like, let me look at your like food log. Uh Uh-huh. You drink six cups of coffee a day. There you go. Quit coffee. Then you'll feel better. Right. And they would be like, well, I quit coffee and now I still have headaches. I still have low energy and I'm still having trouble and I keep waking up all night, but now I have like no joy. (laughs) (laughs) That was like the one thing I looked forward to, like was drinking my coffee. Right. Um, And then I kind of realized, you know, a lot of the things that people do in their lives, whether that is drinking too much caffeine in throughout the day or drinking wine at night, a lot of the times it's a compensation for whatever dysfunction is happening in their bodies. And if we can help their bodies up, so, you know, we use caffeine to stimulate a healthy cortisol surge in the morning that we're supposed to have when we have, um, when we're attuned to our circadian rhythm, and then we'll use wine at nighttime. If we have that wired, but tired and racy feeling, and we can't go to sleep and we're trying to unwind, um, which is supposed to happen naturally when you have, you know, healthy connection to the circadian rhythm and a healthy cortisol curve. Um, and so people were just self medicating and I'm like, well, we can't just be like, quit your drugs, like cold Turkey. <laughs> and so I wanted to find them a way to like build energy throughout the day first and to give them ways to get into that, like relaxing zone in the evenings without having to rely on, um, you know, the caffeine or the wine or whatever the case was. So we really focus on on building energy throughout your day and like getting you to feel rested and tired at night. And it's just like big part of it is tuning into the circadian rhythm. And um, I have a few strategies that would love to share that if people are interested. Sure. Let's give us, give us one that people might not have thought of otherwise. I want, I want them to get the book to get all of it. They need to get the book for the protocol, but what's one thing they really wouldn't hear otherwise one strategy that's been good. I know um, you're a fan of this as well, but Um, I feel like people need to hear this all the time, especially like in the springtime and wintertime, but just getting some morning sunshine so you can step outside. And if you live in Arizona or California, you (laughs) could do this like any time of year, right? You step outside first thing in the morning and you get those, um, that beautiful sunlight from from the sunshine, right? And then like that wakes you up, right? So that sends your body a signal that it's like time to break down your melatonin, time to create some cortisol. This is this is wakey wakey time. Um and so for people who like who live like maybe in Minnesota or like places like Colorado, Chicago, Amsterdam, all, all these beautiful places that um that don't have sunshine year round, and maybe you like you step outside and it's raining and gloomy or just very uncomfortable. You can also use um, a light therapy box. So you can have that like at your bedside when you first wake up or even like in the bathroom when you're getting ready for the morning. And that can um, help your body realize that it's daytime, right? So I, I used one of those when I lived in Amsterdam and it was like raining every single day and it was always so, so dark. And my body was like, is it daytime? Is it nighttime? What's happening? Right. So this, these, this is just like one very practical thing people can do and that can make them feel so much better in just a few days. That's really cool. And I looked over, you talked a lot about the survey that you did of those who followed your protocol and people did really well. They had phenomenal changes in a lot of symptoms, a lot of symptoms you would expect and some symptoms that were even more broad reaching. What were, what are a couple of things, some feedback you got that just, you thought, wow, I wouldn't have thought it would have helped that, you know, like, here's the things like the energy, the sleep, the mood, that's awesome. That's great. But I didn't see this one coming. Is there something like that that stands out that was just kind of an unexpected benefit that showed up or? 
Yeah. So, um, so 92% of people had reduced brain fog, 89% reduced their fatigue, 86% reduced their anxiety. I had to get those stats up. I have them written down. <laughs> They're them. great stats. <laughs> um, but what also surprised me, and I didn't even like think about this until my um, publisher reached out to me and was like, what about weight, weight loss? Did anybody lose weight? And I was like, I don't know, let me, let me look. And I looked and it was like 80% of the people that wanted to lose weight, lost weight throughout the program. And I was like, oh, but that makes so much sense because when we stress our bodies, um, you know, we can, we can really slow down our metabolism. Like, let's say we're not getting enough food and let's say we're like, um, you know, not getting enough sleep and we're not getting enough calories. Our body's like, oh, we must be in a famine. We're going to like, I'm going to help you survive by slowing down your metabolism. So you don't need to um, expand so much, so many calories and you can survive this like very harsh, you know, famine, winter, whatever is going on. And when we really shift that body into that rest, digest, relax state, some people are able to let go of some of that extra weight, right? Because their metabolism naturally just speeds up. That's really cool. Some another insight that might not be apparent. Uh, you talked about the, the the time frame of the protocol and the program, but when when did benefits typically start to show up? At what point does someone say, "Hey, wow, I'm seeing some clear differences"? Like, what's what's the what's the glimmer of hope for someone as a typical time frame for that? Well, it's it's always interesting because whenever I I did this as a group program, the first week people were always like super anxious and overwhelmed and had a lot of um you know we would do. Q and A's on a weekly basis. And we answered everybody's questions throughout the process. And that it just like the energy just shifted right around, like between week two and three, where people were like, Hey, my libido's back. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling good. And then they would be like, I just, you know, I just like was overwhelmed with like some of my, like, they were like, I'm, you know, a, a stay at home wife, stay at home mom. And just like the daily tasks were just so overwhelming for me. And hated walking up and down my stairs. And they're like, I clean my whole house and I've been running up and down my stairs and I feel amazing. I just have so much energy. And it really can transform in that short amount of time where um, what you're just doing is you're just shifting your body into that rest, digest state and that alignment with our circadian rhythm. And then your body's like, oh, it's not nighttime. You're not (laughs) supposed to be tired right now. You're supposed to have energy. Got it. And it's just fabulous what can happen, right? You know, in so many ways, our bodies have uh, vicious cycles and virtuous cycles. You know, good things snowball and bad things snowball. And I think in a lot of cases, it's not even how do we feel, but how how are our symptoms changing? That's the biggest thing for our day-to-day quality of life, I think. And so when someone gets that point to where maybe they're not yet where they want to be, but they know they're changing, they know they're moving in the right direction that's where the whole spark of hope starts to become like a fire almost and it all goes faster and faster. So yeah, a couple of weeks in, that's that's a really good, really good timeframe for that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people do see like within three to five days when they make a change of an intervention, sometimes they could see benefits as early as that. I would say um, some people do. Most people they'll say by, by, I would say majority of people by that week two or three, they're going to see things really transforming for them. So in those who do the program, are there certain, certain traits that you say, oh, this is just, this is for you. You're exactly the one who needs this. There's some things that really stand out to you that predict someone who's going to do great, be really happy, see some quick success. What are the the real hallmarks of someone who this is just like made for? Um, If you have brain fog, if you have fatigue, if you have like anxiety, if you have that like 3 PM crash, if you have trouble sleeping at night or have unrefreshed sleep just that's, that's like my sweet spot with this program. So, and this protocol, so please, please, please check it out. Cause it can make a really big difference in your life, even in a short amount of time. That's awesome. And and this is in the book. I had the pleasure of reading this well in advance and they can get this wherever books are sold by the time this is being played. Is there some places that are better off directed them to than others for, for to pick it up or Um, I, whatever is convenient for you and whatever doesn't overwhelm you. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I love going to bookstores like me. So maybe make that a really pleasurable activity for yourself and go spend the day at a bookstore and, um, pick up some fabulous books, including this one and Dr. Christensen's books. 
but also there's Amazon and they deliver in two days, right? And or Barnes and Noble. So you can you can definitely get the book through um, various online channels um, as well as bookstores. That's cool, Dr. Isabella Wen. So so good to see you, and just good to have an excuse to hang out a bit. And I'm really happy to share this with everyone. You're, you've been just a real beacon of good information for so long. And this is just now the, the next step on that everyone's been waiting for. So thank you for putting this together. Thank you so much, Dr. Christensen, for having me and for all of your pioneering work for helping people with thyroid issues. Um, always love collaborating with you and always love the work that you're doing in this world. <laughs> all right. Thanks for being here with us, everyone, and I'll see you soon on another episode of Medical Myths, Legends, and Fairy Tales. Hey, Dr. Christensen here. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode. Is there a topic you'd like me to cover? I'd love to hear from you. Just go to Dr. Alan Christensen on Facebook or Instagram, write your question, and use the hashtag Medical Myths. Did you find this show helpful? If so, please take a minute and leave us a rating on iTunes so that others can know. Thanks much. I'll be back with you real soon. Bye-bye.